Whenever waves propagate through the same region of space, constructive or destructive interference takes place. Now, wave interference of light generally leads to many interesting natural phenomena, and one common example includes bright colors that are seen as a result of a film of oil on water or concrete. So, to see what we mean, let's look at the following diagram. So, let's suppose we have water shown in blue and a thin film of oil or gasoline shown in brown found on top of the surface of water. Now if we examine a single wave of white light that propagates through air and eventually hits the surface of oil and water, dispersion of that white light will take place and essentially all the different types of wavelengths of color will reflect as shown in the following diagram. Now these waves of light will essentially essentially interfere with one another and the various bright colors seen by the observer is a result of the constructive interference of reflected light waves and this phenomenon is known as thin film interference. So basically, if constructive interference of these waves takes place, if two or more waves are completely in phase with respect to one another, that means their amplitudes will increase and the brightness seen by the eye of the observer will increase. And this is known as thin film interference. So, Instead of looking at white light, let's suppose now we have a single ray of light that is monochromatic, meaning it's a single color, a single wavelength. So basically, when it hits the surface, dispersion does not take place. So let's suppose we have a thin layer of oil placed on top of water as shown in the following diagram. So let's suppose our monochromatic ray of light travels through air and eventually hits point one. Point one represents the boundary between air and oil. So some of this light will essentially reflect as shown by the following reflected ray. Now the rest of that monochromatic light will be transmitted and will travel through that oil. Now when that transmitted ray of light hits the boundary between the oil and water, some of that will reflect as shown in the following diagram. So this is found in position two and it will continue to travel and eventually will leave our oil and enter the air at point three. Now if these two rays of light are completely in phase with respect to one another, constructive interference will take place and the observer will see a bright spot on this section of the oil. However, if destructive interference will take place, the person will not see a bright spot but rather will see a dark spot on this section of the surface of oil and water and this is known as thin film interference. So, once again, suppose we place a thin uniform layer of oil or gasoline on top of water and we assume that the index of refraction of the oil is less than that of water. We'll see why that's important in just a moment. Now, when the incident ray of light, when this ray of light hits the water, some of it is reflected as shown in position one at point one and the rest is transmitted into the oil. Now next the ray reflects at point two so the transmitter ray reflects at point two and travels out of the oil and back into the air at point three as shown in the following diagram. Now these two reflected rays can now undergo interference. So in this diagram we treated these light rays as if they were straight pathways. Now let's suppose they're sinusoidal waves.
So in diagram A, if the waves are in phase with respect to one another, then the light undergoes constructive interference because they're in phase and the surface, this section of the surface, will essentially appear very bright because the amplitude of our wave will increase and the person will see a brighter color. On the other hand, let's look at diagram B. If the waves are out of phase with respect to one another as shown, in other words, the crest of one wave is right next to the trough of the other wave, then the light undergoes destructive interference and the surface at this particular section appears dark or transparent. Now let's look at the following important point. So remember here we made the assumption that the oil had an index of refraction that was smaller than water. Why is that important? Well it turns out the following is always true. So, a ray of light or a beam of light reflected by a material with an index of refraction greater than that in which it is traveling changes phase by exactly 180 degrees or equivalently by half a cycle. So that basically means if a beam or a wave of light is propagating through a medium, let's say N1, and hits the surface of a second medium, let's say with an index of refraction N2, and N2 is greater than N1, then when this wave bounces back, when it reflects, it essentially undergoes a, a phase change of 180 degrees or equivalently one half of a cycle. So this becomes a crest when before it was a trough. On the other hand, if this ray of light essentially propagates through a medium with an index N1 that is greater than N2, it bounces off and nothing takes place. So the wave bounces off in phase with respect to its initial position. So if the index of refraction of this medium is greater than the index of refraction of this medium, no phase change takes place. So let's go back to this section for just a moment. So notice when the monochromatic light ray bounces off the oil at position 1 because the index of refraction of air is less than the index of refraction of oil, our monochromatic ray of light will undergo a phase change.